When SNL's cameras are off, the cast is never too far from scandal. From a serious gambling addiction to grooming allegations, these are the dark stories that Saturday Night Live doesn't want you to know. Laura Keitlinger joined Saturday Night Live as a cast member and writer for the 1994-1995 season. Keitlinger exited after that sole year as part of a massive cast switchover, but went on to create the minor accomplishments of Jackie Woodman and write for Two Broke Girls. She also penned an unproduced screenplay about a woman who grows consumed with rescuing stray cats titled We're All Animals. Keitlinger based the script on personal experiences such as installing feeding areas for unhoused cats at CBS Studios. In 1996, she met an up-and-coming filmmaker named Mike White, who would later go on to create the hit HBO series The White Lotus. During discussions about their respective ideas, Keitlinger shared her goal to write a script about women who rescue animals. In 2002, she finished the screenplay and showed it to White. As he later told the Los Angeles Times, he thought her script was great. Two years later, Keitlinger tried to get the script produced, but no studios were interested. Then, in 2005, Keitlinger read that White had signed a deal to make Year of the Dog, a film about a woman whose life is in disarray because she spends too much time rescuing dogs. Although White maintained he based the movie on his own experiences, Keitlinger accused him of lifting her idea and sued him. A court ruled in his favor. After every episode of Saturday Night Live, the cast decamps to a restaurant or bar to party into Sunday. According to David Spade on an episode of Norm MacDonald Live, Norm MacDonald would often skip the festivities and use NBC's car service to head to Atlantic City, New Jersey. It was there that the Weekend Update host would gamble away his earnings. However, one stroke of good luck would ultimately turn into a gambling problem for the comedian. MacDonald explained on Larry King Now, so uh, I, I was a casual gambler, you know, would go and bet $25 on uh, blackjack. He then added, I hit a craps table and went on a gigantic run, won, you know, six figures, and ever since then, you can't go back. And so he didn't. McDonald decided not to cash in all the chips from that $100,000 plus win. Instead, he kept the chips in his home freezer before gambling them all away. Ultimately, McDonald would go broke from gambling. Then, after building his savings back up, he once again lost all of his money on gambling. In the early 90s, SNL cast member Ellen Cleghorn made an indelible impression with popular recurring characters like Zoraida, the NBC page, and Queen Shaniqua. Despite SNL's ensemble format, Cleghorn was said to be egregiously undercompensated relative to what her co-workers could command. On a 2022 episode of Fly on the Wall with Dana Carvey and David Spade, Cleghorn brought up the rarely discussed topic of cast salary, revealing to the hosts, I'll tell you how much I started at. Okay. $245 an episode. Nothing extra if I got anything on and nothing for writing. Cleghorn then went on to reveal that in 1995, her final season on the show, her salary was just $4,500 an episode. As an original staff writer and occasional performer, Al Franken helped mold the format and sensibility of Saturday Night Live over its first 20 seasons. While he'd later occasionally show up for a cameo, Franken departed SNL in the mid-1990s to focus on political satire. In 2008, he took his political leanings to the next level and won the election to represent his home state of Minnesota in the U.S. Senate. In 2017, during his second term, eight women came forward to accuse Franken of improper conduct. Radio host Leanne Tweeden alleged that during a 2006 USO tour, Franken touched her while she slept on a plane and also forcefully kissed her during a rehearsal, both without consent. Franken publicly and privately apologized to Tweeden and to some of his other accusers. In response to the allegations, he resigned from his U.S. Senate seat in early 2018. Following a distinguished run on Saturday Night Live in the 1970s, Bill Murray went on to become one of the most reliable comic movie stars of the next few decades, acting in films like Caddyshack and Groundhog Day, among others. In 1990, Murray starred in and co-directed the crime comedy Quick Change opposite Gina Davis. However, 32 years later, she accused him of enacting abuse and improper conduct toward her during the making of the film. In her memoir, Dying of Politeness, Davis alleged that she landed the role following a hotel room meeting with Murray and other members of the production. It was there that Murray tried to use a massaging device on her. Despite her frequently stated discomfort with the idea, he purportedly persisted. Apparently, Murray did this in a bid to see if Davis would be an obedient worker, she wrote. Pretty quickly, it was clear that this was a non-negotiable thing. 
The experience ultimately left her shaken. Other co-workers also accused Murray of onset misbehavior. In 2022, filming ended on being mortal after a member of the production lodged a complaint against the actor. Speaking to CNBC, Murray described the incident as a clash of opinions and insisted that he was trying to learn from his mistakes. In 2014, stand-up comic Pete Davidson joined Saturday Night Live at just 20 years old. A longtime open user of marijuana, Davidson said in his stand-up special Alive from New York that his copious cannabis use backstage at SNL earned the ire of guest host Louis C.K., who reported him to show producers. And I was like, oh, uh, so like, am I fired? And he was like, no. And I was like, why? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> In 2016, Davidson told High Times that he used marijuana to self-medicate for Crohn's disease, with which he was diagnosed as a teenager. Six months later, in a since-deleted Instagram post, he explained the reason for his brief absence from SNL and social media, writing, I quit drugs and am happy and sober for the first time in eight years. Uh, well, they say quitting drugs is hard, and that is true, but what they don't tell you is how boring it is. Having enrolled in a rehabilitation program at that time, Davidson eventually came to the realization that his weed use wasn't the problem. In an interview with Howard Stern, the comedian revealed that he felt just as bad sober as he did using drugs. During an appearance on Open Late, Davidson elaborated that at that time, he'd also been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Experiencing an epiphany of sorts, the comedian ultimately concluded that marijuana actually helped him manage his symptoms. Davidson said, I found out I had a mental disorder. I thought I had a drug problem. It's a completely different thing. Horatio Sands, a cast member of Saturday Night Live from 1998 to 2006, was named as the defendant in a 2021 lawsuit, along with SNL Studios and SNL parent company NBC Universal. Per NBC News, an anonymous woman accused Sands of sexual assault and grooming while she was a minor. The woman ran an SNL fan website and alleged that Sands and his frequent sketch partner Jimmy Fallon answered an email she sent in January 2000 when she was 15. She claimed that both comedians were aware of her age. Later that year, she met Sands in person at an SNL broadcast, where he was accused of flirting with the young girl and showing her physical affection. The woman furthermore alleged that she frequently attended SNL tapings and that Sands would bring her to cast parties. It was at these parties that she was served alcohol and engaged in drug use. The lawsuit additionally accused Sands of having groomed the young woman online, giving her proprietary SNL news to break on her blog while also engaging in cybersex with her. She also claimed that the comedian had sexually assaulted and harassed her in the presence of NBC employees. While Fallon didn't comment on the lawsuit, Sands' attorney accused the plaintiff of requesting $7.5 million prior to filing in exchange for her silence. In November 2022, both parties agreed to dismiss the suit per NBC News. If you or someone you know may be the victim of child abuse, please contact the Child Help National Child Abuse Hotline at 1-800-4-A-CHILD, 1-800-422-4453, or contact their live chat services.